The rocket differs from the turbojet and other air-breathing engines in that all of the exhaust jets consist of the gaseous combustion products of propellants carried on board. Like the turbojet engine, the rocket develops thrust by the rearward ejection of mass at a very high velocity. A rocket in its simplest form is a chamber enclosing a gas under pressure. In this video, we are going to discuss how a rocket works. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. But before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Rocket engines produce thrust by the expulsion of an exhaust fluid that has been accelerated to high speed through a propelling nozzle. The fluid is usually a gas created by high pressure combustion of solid or liquid propellants consisting of fuel and oxidizer components within a combustion changer. As the gases expand through the nozzle, they are accelerated to very high or supersonic speed, and the reaction to this pushes the engine in the opposite direction. With space rockets, the gas is produced by burning propellants that can be solid or liquid in form or a combination of the two. Rockets need so much fuel in order to overcome Earth's gravity. Only when they reach a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour are they traveling fast enough to enter orbit. Most rockets are made up of two or three stages. When a stage has used up all of its fuel, it is separated to get rid of the dead weight. It then falls back, usually into the ocean and far from populated areas, or burns up in the atmosphere. Large launchers often get an extra boost from rockets strapped onto the first stage. These may use solid or liquid fuel. They too are usually thrown away. Fuel and oxygen are mixed and ignited outside the rocket motor, and then the exploding, burning mixture expands and pours out the back of the rocket to create the thrust needed to propel it forward. As opposed to an airplane engine, which operates within the atmosphere and thus can take in air to combine with fuel for its combustion reaction, a rocket needs to be able to operate in the emptiness of space, where there's no oxygen. In space, an engine has nothing to push against. So how do rockets move there? Rockets work by a scientific rule called Newton's Third Law of Motion. English scientist Sir Isaac Newton listed three laws of motion. He did this more than 300 years ago. His third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The rocket pushes on its exhaust. The exhaust pushes the rocket too. The rocket pushes the exhaust backwards. The exhaust makes the rocket move forward. This rule can be seen on Earth. Imagine a person standing on a skateboard. Imagine that person throwing a bowling ball. The ball will go forward. The person on the skateboard will move too. The person will move backward. Because the person is heavier, the bowling ball will move farther. However, imagine carrying several heavy tanks of oxygen along a long space mission. That is a major load. Fortunately, some rocket fuels that have been developed do not need oxygen to burn, such as hydrazine. Hydrazine decomposes into ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen when exposed to the right catalyst. As the rocket gains speed, keeping the direction of motion closely aligned with the direction of thrust is critical. Gradual adjustments are needed to steer the rocket towards an orbital trajectory, but a severe misalignment can send the rocket whirling out of control. Most rockets, including the Falcon and Titan series and the Saturn V moon rocket, steer using gimbaled engines, mounted so that the entire rocket motor can pivot and vary the direction of its thrust from moment to moment. Other steering options include using external vanes to deflect the exhaust gases as they escape the rocket engine most effective with solid-fueled rockets that lack a complex motor, and auxiliary engines such as small thruster rockets mounted on the sides of the rocket stage. The more widespread liquid-fueled rockets are far more complex. 
Typically, they involve a pair of propellant tanks, one each for the fuel and the oxidant, connected to a combustion chamber through a complex maze of pipes. The rate of supply can be throttled up or down depending on the requirement, and the fuel can be injected as a simple jet or a fine spray, sending a spacecraft from one planet to another with minimum delta V requirements includes injecting it into an elliptical orbit around the sun called a Hohmann transfer orbit. The spacecraft travels along a segment of the elliptical path that resembles a spiral track between the orbits of the two planets and requires no further thrust along its journey. On arrival at its target object, it may use the gravity alone to enter its final orbit, or it may require a burst of rocket thrust in the opposite direction, usually accomplished by simply turning the spacecraft around in space and firing the motor before it can achieve a stable orbit. Let us know your opinion in the comments section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.